Okay, so now here's the other thing about the keyboard. If the keyboard comes up and you don't want it up there, all you have to do is just tap or touch above it and the keyboard will go away. Okay, so again we'll come down here to the start button or the, the Windows home button I guess it is and it takes you right back here. This is a very handy dandy button to have. So there are some things you, you may want to use the classic interface for Windows to use and that is all contained over here in this little tile called desktop with the flowers. You're going to punch this once and all of a sudden things probably look a lot more familiar to you. You have your regular desktop with your recycle bin up here, so on and so forth. You've got your little folder icon here. If you touch that, you get, you know, documents and, um, oops, double click that. We don't have any documents. And basically your standard Windows layout. And this is the thing that Windows 8 got blasted for because it's basically two operating systems in one. You have your, your basic Windows 7 style layout here. I mean, you have your new, they call this the Metro interface, uh, which is really designed for finger use without a keyboard. That's what it's used for. But they give you this also. Two for the price of one. I think it's cool. I, I actually find it very useful on the Surface tablet. Not so useful on the, on the laptop I have it installed on. Um, I only use the desktop only on the laptop because this other one is really hard to navigate through unless you can use your fingers to do it. If you're trying to use a mouse to run back and forth across all these, it takes forever. Very inconvenient. So you can hit the desktop icon over here. And what I like about it is that this version of Windows comes with, uh, this is the icon for Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and I think that's Note. And Word, I use all the time at home. Uh, I would use this a lot if I had a, a Surface tablet and I would hit blank document and then if I touch the screen and I need the keyboard it's not coming up there's a keyboard icon down here you press that guy and then here comes your keyboard so you know you can just type quick quick brown fox and you see the, the words coming up there I, I really think this is cool that you get a functionality of both. We'll exit out of it. Don't save. Exit out of that. Um, one note. That's the icon there. So let's say, let's go back here, let's hit our Windows button. Let's say you wanted to shut it off. You're done with it for the day, right? What's great about tablets is they're really, they're misers on power. They don't take much power at all. All you gotta do is just hit this on off button up here, turn the screen off, and that's it. You get ready to use it again the next day, hit the button, on we go. See that this is your battery meter down here and your Wi Fi meter. Scroll up, and it, you notice it didn't ask me for a pin that time because. I think there's like a 10 or 15 minute timer on it. If you've had the screen off or inactive for 15 minutes, then it will prompt you for a pin. Since I had just shut the screen off and turned it back on, it didn't ask for the pin. Um, but let's say you had a reason to where you wanted to shut it all the way off or you needed to restart it. From the right side of this, if I put my thumb on the black and then swipe in, you see I get a menu that pops up over here search, share, this start, that's just another version of that. They do the exact same thing. Um, devices, I'll skip over that for now. You'd hit settings, and then under settings, if you see an icon there that says power. You would hit power, and then you get sleep, shut down, update, and restart. And it should just say restart, but obviously it's downloaded some updates. Um, so you would just punch one of those options and do what you wanted it to do. But again, you don't have to shut this down uh, or even put it to sleep when you're done with it. All you got to do is hit this button on top. That's it. 
The iPads are very similar. There's a button right here on this side. Tap it on, off, on, off, and it makes the experience a lot better when you don't have to wait, you know, 30 seconds, a minute, minute and a half, or five minutes like that old desktop you got to boot up. It makes it very quick. So these are just some very rough, rough basics of what you're about to get into. Um, it is going to be a little intimidating, sure. Um, oh, I'll show you that too. But the ultra portability of this thing is is the key. Like you just pick it up, one hand, you know, go around with it. I sit on the couch with it, uh, just on my lap. You don't need a fan or anything like that. See, so I just set it down, and I get on here and. I'll open up the internet and I'll just see what Slick Deals has cooking. I just typed in SL and then one of these little icons here, these instant search results says Slick Deals. So I I punch that and the Slick Deals will open up here in a second. And then I just start scrolling through to see what's going on. Like I said, you don't need a mouse. You don't need to have your fingers just in that so-so square on the touchpad. The whole thing is your the whole thing is your touchpad for your mouse. And the battery will last I think it's going to last you probably at least 2 maybe 3 days on a single charge. The iPad lasts me about 3 days on a single charge if I use it a lot. And honestly, the Surface has had better better battery life than my iPad has. They're very impressed with it. So, that's all for this piece. Um I'm going to the next video I set up for you I'm going to show you and I purposely didn't start you out by showing you the fancy pants keyboard I got the tablets are designed to be used without the keyboards and to get the full experience of the tablet is to not use it with the keyboards uh, they really are cumbersome uh, but they're exceptional when you need to type a long email. And I think I told you, I, I've got one for my iPad that I only use if I know I'm going to type you a long email. I find that typing on the screens is pretty responsive. It takes a little getting used to, don't get me wrong, but I find that it's good enough for the average everyday stuff that I do, especially for web browsing. You don't need the keyboards at all. It's only really for, for long instances of typing. So... I would highly encourage you to not use the keyboard first, at least for the first day, maybe two days. If you want to use it to type me an email, that's that's fine, but try to wean yourself off of needing that keyboard because you'll find this a lot easier to use and carry around and all that stuff if you don't uh, have the keyboard attached. So, But I'll show you that next.